When you build drag and drop interactions in Articulate Storyline, you have two ways to approach it. One way is to use triggers, and the other way is to use the Convert to Freeform feature. In the previous tutorial, we focused on triggers. In this one, we'll do the Convert to Freeform. So we're going to build this type of activity. So what we have is a box, and I need to determine which items go into my box for my Emergency Preparedness Kit. So I can click and drag, and you'll notice they stack really nice and neat inside the box. And then when I'm happy with my decision, I can go ahead and hit the Submit button, and I get some feedback. So let's go ahead and see how we build that. So we'll close the preview. Make sure you open up your practice file. And what we have on the slide right now are some shapes, and we've got these objects we want to make draggable, and we want to put those in the box. Now a few things we'll do before we get started. Always make sure that your titles are there, so everything's titled the way you want them to be titled. The other thing is those objects on the screen that I'm, I don't want to use and I don't want them to accidentally move, I'll lock those. So I'm going to go ahead and lock these things. And now the only thing I can select on the screen are those items that I'm going to work with. Now before we do the Convert to Freeform, let's look at what we have. If we come over to the Slide Layers, you'll notice right now all we have is a base layer. And if we come up to the Triggers, you'll notice that all we have are the Previous and Next Button triggers, and that's about it. So we're going to do the Convert to Freeform, and then we'll take a look and see what we have on the side panel. So let's go to Insert, and what we're going to do is a Convert to Freeform. Now the reason it's called Convert to Freeform is because right now this is just a slide with objects on it. I mean, it's a freeform environment, so we can move the objects anywhere we want to. But what we want to do is we're going to convert it to a freeform quiz question. So what Storyline does is it's going to take the objects that we have on the screen, we'll determine what we want to do, and it's going to convert that all to a quiz question, and it'll build the quizzing logic and all that stuff for us, so we don't have to do any programming. So let's go ahead and choose Convert to Freeform. And you can see there are a few options. We're just going to choose drag and drop. Hit OK. So we have a form with two columns. One column where we can choose our drag items, and the other column where we can choose our drop targets. And then down here we have our feedback. Over here you can see we've got a thumbnail that gives us some visual cues while we're doing our construction. And then you can see we have a form view, and we have slide view. So when I want to edit the form, I go to form view, and I can make my edits. And then when I want to work on the slide, I can go to Slide View. So let's go back to Form View. And the first thing we're going to do is determine what do we want to make draggable. In this case, it's going to be all of these objects here. And this is really where titling comes in handy. So I'm going to click here. This will give me a list of what's on my slide. I can quickly find them because they're titled. So I want the flashlight. I want the hot dogs. I want the radio. And I want the water. So those are all going to be draggable. And you can see I've got the little visual cue here. So as I click, you can see that it's indicating uh, what I've selected. So what do we have? Flashlight, hot dogs. Is this going to be radio? Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to determine my drop target. In this case, I know the flashlight needs to go into the box. I know that the hot dogs are not a correct answer, so I'll just leave that at none. I know the radio needs to go into the box, and I know the water needs to go into the box. Now in this example, we have one drop target, but you could have multiple drop targets. So you could have you know, perishable items go in one place, and non-perishable go into another. So a lot of things you can do when you build these drag and drops. Now if we come down here, you'll notice we have some feedback. I can keep my default feedback that Storyline creates, or I can double click, and at this point I can edit that. If I want to add more, I can click on More, and then I can add some more text. I can record some audio, and I can also control the branching based on the decisions that the learner's making. We're just going to focus on the drag and drop capabilities for this tutorial. If you want to learn more about the quizzing, watch the quizzing tutorials. So we'll go ahead and hit Cancel here. So we're going to keep this at default. So let's come back to Slide View. And when we look at slide view, what what happened? So first off, we've got this toggle. If we come down here to the triggers panel, we don't have the previous next button anymore. Instead, we have a submit button. 
And if we look down at the slide layers, you can see we have correct and incorrect feedback layers. Now these slide layers are just like any other layers that you'd have in Storyline. So you can edit them, you can do whatever you want to with them. And if you want to change the master, just go up to View. And then you've got your Slide Master and you also have your Feedback Master. So at this point you can customize these, brand them, do whatever you need to do to make your courses look right. So let's preview this and see what we have. So we're going to preview the slide. And what was a static slide with content on it now is an interaction. So I can drag objects. So I can make some selections. And when I'm happy with my selection, I can hit Submit. And now I get some feedback. So all that logic and the quizzing, all of that was built for me by Storyline. Let's go ahead and see what options we have. One thing that you can do is you can change these. So you can shuffle these. So right now it's flashlight, hot dog, water, radio. And let's say when you come to this, and if you come to it multiple times, I just want to have this in a different order. So I can come up here to shuffle, and I can choose shuffle answers. And let's preview this. Now I have a different order for my answers. So if I replay this, you can see it's shuffling the answers. And then I can drag those. Now you'll notice right now when I drag them, right now they're all kind of stacking in the center of the image. Let's say I want to have them nice and neat and tiled so I can see those. So how do I do that? Come over here to your drag and drop options. You can see if there's a number of things you can do. One of the things that you have a drop target options. And right now it's set to stack random. What we want to do is we want it to tile. So I'll hit OK. And now when I preview this, I'm going to drag them and they're going to tile right here in the center of the box. Oh, what's happening? Well, they're tiling. But what's happening is they're tiling based on the bounding box of the image. So the box image is actually much larger. So it goes right here. So this is something that's common when you build drag and drop interactions. You need to have a drop target. But when you place the object on the target, it's going to align based on that object. So in this case, the bounding box for the box is much larger than the actual drop target, which is the inside of the box. So what you need to do is when you're working with images like this, is you actually need to create a different drop target. In this case, we can just create an invisible shape that can sit inside the box and that will become our drop target. Now the perfect way to create a functional invisible shape is use the hotspot. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go to Slide View. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a hotspot right here. So go to Insert, choose Controls, and then we'll choose the hotspot. I'll just draw this here inside the box. Now this is going to be our drop target. Now a couple of things when you're working with hotspots. By default, hotspots are set up to be interactive. And we want to get rid of the trigger that's created. The trigger right now doesn't really do anything. But it may confuse you when you're doing your editing. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And then we're going to rename the hotspot because hotspot's really not the right name for it. So we'll call this our target. So now we know this is our drop target. And we're going to go ahead and change that. So we go to Form View. Now instead of the box, we just select Target. And now we're changing our target. So if we preview this, we should have a drop target that's smaller. And everything lines up really nice and neat. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. What are some of the other options that we have? Let's go ahead and look. If we come back to Form View, if we go to drag and drop options, you can see that you can reveal drag items one at a time. This really comes in handy. For example, in this case I only have four objects on the screen. But let's say I had 20 objects and I need to put those in the box. I don't have enough room for 20 objects on the screen. So what I can do is just have one appear at a time and then I can drag those. And then when I'm done, the next one appears and then the next one appears. The other thing you can do is you can have objects return to their drop target. And this is something I do quite a bit. So for example, I'm going to have it return when it's not dropped on the correct target. I'll hit OK. Now when I preview this, what will happen is the right ones will snap in. The wrong ones will go away. The right ones will snap in. 
So I really can't get this wrong. So at this point, I don't need the Submit button. So what I'll do is I'll use the Convert to Freeform feature as a quick way to build drag and drop interactions, but I don't really need the quizzing features. So to turn off the quizzing feature, I just need to get rid of the Submit button. So let's go ahead and do that. To get rid of the Submit button, all you need to do is go to Slide View. And down here at your Base Layer, click on the Properties. And you can see that there's a Submit button check. So we'll uncheck that. And I can just do a Previous Next button, hit OK. Now when I preview, I have the advantage of the quick drag and drop building that I can do with the Convert to Freeform. I get my feedback here, so I'm only going to make right decisions. And then when I'm done with the activity, I can just advance to the next slide. So a lot of times you may want to build drag and drop interactions. You can build them much faster in the Convert to Freeform feature than you can building a whole bunch of triggers. And in that case, if you don't care about the quizzing, just turn the Submit button off and enable the previous Next buttons. So that's a quick overview of building the Convert to Freeform drag and drop interactions. Again, you can use triggers or you can use the Convert to Freeform or you can even use a combination of those things. So go ahead and practice these activities and then when you feel comfortable, start to add some drag and drop interactions to your e-learning courses.